Hi everyone, this is Tamara Warren with the Wind Center at West Hills College Lamore. This is a biz chat featuring uh, the Nixon Group. We have Sam Ramirez here on the call. Sam, why don't you give a quick introduction um, about yourself and then we can go ahead and get started. Sure, uh, thank you. My name is Sam Ramirez. I'm the, the founder and uh, president of the Nixon Group. Uh, we're a, a local Central Valley based in Visalia hospitality company. Um, I've been in the industry for nearly 20 years now doing all sorts of different uh, resorts, hotels, water parks, venues. Um, and about a year and a half ago, started our own company and decided we wanted to focus on hospitality, specifically here in the Central Valley, uh, working with uh, not only our owned projects that we would take on, but also working with developers and partners who had an interest in bringing something new and different to the Valley uh, and investing, you know, kind of here locally. So uh, we've got a few projects that we're working on right now and, and definitely a handful more in the pipeline and looking forward to uh, a busier time once all this uh, kind of craziness is over. Yeah, sounds good. Thank you. Um, so my first question for you is what led you to create the Nixon Group? Um, you know, I think the, the idea behind the Naxon Group at the end of the day was trying to um, take all of the experience and time that I had spent working in this, in this industry, working in these markets. Um, and I think, candidly, I'd, I'd been in it for so long and done so many different things that I finally said, I want to do something for myself. I want to do something my way. Um, and had really been fortunate and had a lot of great opportunities along the way. Uh, but really believe that I was the point that um, I understood the uniqueness of uh, this business and wanted to just really kind of set my own path. And candidly, I was uh, had a lot, had found a lot of success and had built a lot of really great teams over the years. Um, and finally, thought you know I want to I want to develop my team in a way uh, that makes me and my team money. Uh, ways that create success for us and creates programs for us and aren't necessarily specific to let's create value for ownership or, or stockholders, but rather let's invest in our people and create a structure we can do that. And so I think that was kind of the goal when we started. Nice. So my next question uh, for you is what past experiences helped you build this company? Well, I have been in, like I said, I've been in hotels and resorts for nearly 20 years. My first job was actually when I was in college, I was going to Cuesta College uh, over in San Luis Obispo. Um, and there was a golf course that I had, I was going to school to be a teacher. And there was a golf course there uh, that some friends and I had golfed at and they were hiring in the pro shop. And I thought, oh, that'd be kind of cool. If I worked in the pro shop, I'd probably get like discounted. Let me go apply there. Unfortunately, I just filled the position, but the person who I spoke to at the counter, I didn't know at the time, um, was actually a, uh, was the, the owner's son of the resort. And he said, we're, we're not hiring here, uh, but we are hiring at the hotel that it was attached. And I said, well, do I still get discounted golf? And they said, yeah, yeah, definitely. You'd be an employee. And so I said, great, sign me up for that. <laughs> I started working at the front desk of a hotel at 19. I'd never done anything like that before. I've worked in kind of food service here and there, but nothing in hotels or resorts. And so it was very new to me. And I, I truly just kind of fell in love with the industry. And um, I think from there, I, I just progressively, I, I just moved progressively in my career and trying and doing different things and, and different properties and boutique hotels and branded, you know, flags like IHG and Hilton and Marriott and those guys um, and kind of work around a lot of different areas. And so I, I think ultimately understanding and working in housekeeping to front desk, to the kitchen, to, to serving you know, all of that and the business side of it really led me to be prepared to kind of start my own company. And I think probably more so than anything was uh, understanding the financials, the numbers. And that's one thing for any, anyone coming into this industry and any students that would kind of be here looking for this. Uh, if there was anything I could, I could recommend is to know your numbers. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I spent early on, I had a general manager who said, you know, Hey, if there's one thing I can teach you before I leave, what is it? I said, teach me profit and loss statements. Teach me net operating, teach me food costs, teach me cost of goods sold. Let, help me understand that side of it and have a really firm grasp. And that's what I really focused on. And I think that's probably one of the number one things that led me to, you know, uh, kind of be able to build the company in a way that um, I think is, is profitable and, and makes sense for myself and for my staff and employees. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, so then what types of services do you offer in your company? So right now we're, we're focused specifically on kind of three pillars. We have 
um, hospitality in general, all within hospitality management. So the first would be hotel management. Um, mm -hmm. A project of ours is the Darling Hotel in downtown Visalia. Um, it's a 32 room boutique hotel. It's opening in, a, in an old 1935 county courthouse building. Uh, mm -hmm. so beautiful architecture and history and just really kind of amazing there. And so um, we will be managing that hotel once it opens. It's five families in Visalia that started the hotel. Um, great families, great business backgrounds. None of them have ever worked a day in the hotel, in a hotel. And so uh, we're working alongside of them and have been for nearly two years now of consulting on things from bed linen to property management systems to mm. kind of all these pieces, working with them to develop those. And then once we open, hopefully in about June or so, uh, we'll be converting that into kind of a management uh, agreement ongoing where we'll manage the property similar to any kind of management company. Um, the other is venues. Um, I spent a number of years working for a company out of Utah. We built uh, venues across the Western U.S. And so um, we have one in Visalia that we own and operate. Um, and I also have a couple of folks that we're talking to about potentially um, taking over management or ownership even of their venues kind of locally within the Valley. Mm -hmm. um, trying to find some economies of scale from having a centralized accounting team, a centralized sales team um, who are, you know, selling multiple products that are, that complement one another as opposed to compete necessarily. And then lastly is just consulting. So we had a gentleman that, that reached out to us here probably late last year and said, Hey, I'm looking to build a hotel in the Valley here in town, in a certain town. I have land. I'm just not sure what makes sense. And so again, we spent some time with them looking at things like star reports and occupancy indexes and understanding what was happening in that market uh, to kind of advise them of, hey, these are the types of properties. Here's even learning, you know, kind of a glossary of here's what ADR is, here's what revenue is, here's what food cost is and how you calculate, mm -hmm. helping them get understanding and educated in that way. And so ultimately that project's on hold, but it's, it's those types of things that kind of come to us that uh, we get to have a conversation with about and say, hey, here's kind of the pros and cons, help educate them a little bit. Sounds good, thank you. And so then as CEO, what, or as president and CEO, what do you, your day-to-day -day responsibilities then include? You know, fortunately we are a small company and, and I, I, we've had, I've been very fortunate to work with folks all over kind of different parts of the country and had opportunities even with our company to go in and help in other markets and other areas. But I have specifically focused on the Central Valley and because I want my day-to-day -to, -day to involve me driving and seeing my properties. And so, you know, for example, my, my, my morning today, uh, this morning was spent on recruitment, um, trying to identify some top talent, hotel managers and, and sales coordinators, in different roles for the hotel that we're building. Um, this afternoon, we have a sales and marketing meeting uh, regarding social media, you know, strategy around a venue. Uh, and later on today, I'll be spending some time at the hotel, literally walking the hotel and saying, okay, well, where do we need, um, some uh, what, what, what's kind of some of the furniture layout what do we need mats and logo things and so i'm very very hands-on and i and i have a small team for that reason um so yeah my my day-to-day -day includes everything from social media work and working with our teams to you know taking a look at our sites and working with construction folks um to you know forecasts and I mean just about everything in between it's it's there's no I'm not sitting in an office all day uh, I think I would go crazy if I had to um, I, I get a chance to get out and see the different properties and talk to staff and folks that we're working with and yeah very nice that sounds exciting <laughs> yeah it's a lot of fun it, dev it never gets boring for sure yeah yeah um, what is one of the most rewarding and one of the most challenging aspects of your current role of being CEO I think that one of the, I mean, the most rewarding is seeing a project come to completion. And I mean, we, and, and one of the things that is really important, I think, in terms of what I do, um, I'm, I'm absolutely working for today and helping my team and my staff work in today. But I think as, as head of the company, sort of my focus has to also be looking at tomorrow. Uh, what's going to help us grow? What's going to help be the next opportunity? And what does that look like? And, and so I think one of the most rewarding things for me is, I mean, we, we spent six months on a venue, building out our venue, um, where every day at six in the morning, I was meeting with construction folks and talking about what was going on for the day. And then at that time, going back, going to my day job and coming back to them the day and, and looking at progress and what tweaks and changes have been made and managing that timeline. And I think getting, seeing all of that happen and work for me it was all great. I loved it. I was super excited about the product we'd put together and what it was. But until we had our grand opening, I was terrified because I didn't know at the end of the day, 
um, I can build something that I think is incredible. And I think the price is great and people are going to love this. And that paint color is amazing. And this decor design and the, everything's great, but the, the market will tell you whether you've done a good job or not. And yeah. I think that's the, the thing that I always wait for is how does the market going to respond? And so mm -hmm. getting that positive response is always encouraging. And I think one of the things that motivates me is just when, when people give the positive response, but they have that feedback. And I take that very, very seriously. And we've, we've made tweaks to our business model all along the way, because at the end of the day, like I said, I could love it, uh, but it's the, the guest that's going to that's gonna pay for it, obviously, the client who's going to see value in the product. And so that's kind of what we, what we think I think is really important. And I think that the, uh, the challenging part is just the times that we're in today, um, mm -hmm. just uncertainty. Uh, it's incredibly scary to have spent, you know, nearly 20 years in hospitality, getting a paycheck, uh, and then starting your own company and, you, and having other people now depend on you. There's no one else to look at. It's, it's, it's my responsibility for my team and my staff and my projects. And so um, it, it's a challenge, but it's, it's one that I, even today, I, I'm very optimistic about and very excited about. Uh, but it is, it's a very different situation um, kind of being on your own than working uh, with the security or safety of a larger company, I guess. Mm -hmm. So then for a student who's interested in a career in hospitality and venue management, following in your footsteps, what skill sets should they be developing currently? I mean, I think, and you, I'm sure they hear this a lot, but I mean, it's really about networking. It's really about understanding and knowing, introducing yourself to who's doing what in the community, who's doing what in the market. I think it's as important to, to meet the folks that you see or perceive are doing things really, really well as well as the ones that you say, well, that's not how I want to do business because I think there's opportunities to learn from both. And um, I think not being afraid to ask the questions. I mean, I've, I've hired uh, at different properties I've been at in the past, I've, I've hired folks who have um, reached out to us and said, hey, I'm really interested in your product and what you're doing. I think this is really cool. I'd like to be a part of this. Is there, what, what, what do you think or what role do you think I could fill? And I think being open to understanding that you may not come into your dream job right away, but that there's an opportunity to, to get on early with folks who are trying to build, who are trying to do something different and unique. Uh, focus on the experience. Um, th there's a, that, that's just kind of what, I, I've worked for companies that are very cookie cutter um, and it's very templated and sort of this is how we do business and this is it and there's no kind of room for anything else. Um, if you're looking and interested in a career in this industry, I would absolutely uh, keep in mind that the, the experience and, and who you sign up to work with and for is as important as the opportunity itself. And, and just taking the time to really understand um, what their priorities are, what they're interested in and, and kind of what's important to them. Um, and do you align with that? Is that something that you believe in that you can get behind? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, network, don't be afraid to reach out to folks. Um, you know, be persistent in that. We get a ton of emails and, and questions every week from folks. Um, mm -hmm. Find us on Instagram, they find my personal Facebook, they find LinkedIn, they find anything they can. <laughs> so, hey, we, we wanna, you know, we wanna be a part of this or we wanna see what's going on. We wanna get more information and learn more. It's great, you know, we keep saying the, name, the same name kind of enough times and it, it kind of, <laughs> have an opportunity it's well when I do have something and I think that's what's really important too is that don't think for a second that that uh if you were to come up you know to someone like myself and say hey I don't have anything right now I'm sorry don't think for a second that doesn't mean that if you don't make a positive impression that I'm going to hang on to that name for the future I've built some of my best teams around people who have you know come in and said uh hey I'm super interested I'm, I'm this is sounds exciting uh but hey I'm sorry I don't have anything for you at the moment um mm -hmm. You make a good impression and you, they're, they're, I've connected with folks six months, a year down the road. So, mm. Yeah, that's great. That's good advice. Um, so then my next question then with that is what steps would you recommend for a future entrepreneur who may be interested in owning their own hospitality company? Yeah, again, I would say to look at every opportunity. I mean, I, I've had uh, and understand your numbers more than anything. Um, any developer partner, banking partner, finance, I mean, th these are realities that we need. Um, I, I didn't come from, you know, a place where my, I was bankrolled into what I was doing. <laughs> Bring together the capital that was needed to kind of get us started and, and found some really good opportunities. And so I, I would say, 
our venue, for example, I, I met with a real estate gentleman um, who we talked about doing a project in downtown Visalia. It wasn't the right building. It wasn't the right project. It just kind of quite didn't make sense. Got put on the back burner. Nearly a year later, he reached out to me and said, hey, I've got this developer. He's, he's got this, pro this building, this project. We think he'd be really great for it. Would you, you know, I'd like to come in and have a conversation? And we did. And so I think making, again, that connection that for me took an entire year for it to actually see benefit um, was super beneficial. So start now uh, because those connections along the way are going to have a huge um, kind of benefit and impact to you. And like I said, more than anything, no one understand your numbers because uh, any developer, any real estate folk, any banking person I've spoken to, they, they want to have confidence that you understand your numbers. You understand mm -hmm. what your, are, your revenue potential is, you've done your market research, um, understand those things and do it for the right reasons. Um, some people start a company because they want to be the boss mm -hmm. and they want to, you know, uh, be in an office and, and, and order other people around. And that's not, if you're doing it right, that's not really the right way to go about it. The right reason, um, yeah. take your time in that. So. Sounds good. I love the advice of starting now. Cause I think so many of our students wait until their program is completed and they don't realize that if they start that now, it could really benefit them at that point in time later down the road. So that's great. Absolutely. And especially now, I spent 20 years before I started to kind of understand some of these things. And if they can understand that stuff now, I think it, they're, they're going to be ahead of me. I'll end up working for them. So, <laughs> so then um, my next question is what new projects are you currently working on? You mentioned the Darling Hotel and how are you continuing their progress amid the current COVID-19 concerns and situation? Yeah. I mean, it's definitely a, a an anxiety, anxiety driven time right now for everyone. Um, it's, it's particularly hard to hit um, our industry, the, the hospitality industry, uh, uh, disproportionately, I think, and, and restaurants and, and bars and, you know, kind of venues and kind of the whole deal. Um, we remain hopeful. Uh, we, we work with the best information we have, which is all any of us can do. We all, we all wish they would tell us, hey, June 1st, we're good, keep going. But that's, you know, we know that's not reality. So I think for us right now, it's about spending time investing in our models and our businesses to make sure that when this business does come back, that we're ready for it. Uh, because we know um, that, that it will. Um, mm -hmm. We know that there will be a time, and in fact, there's probably going to be even higher demand uh, mm -hmm. come summer, early fall, um, when a lot of places are going to be booked already and a lot of demand is already going to be there. And so, you know, for places like the hotel, we're, we're, moving, we're moving along as planned. Uh, construction is continuing. We've certainly made some adjustments to potential opening dates. Um, mm -hmm. to make sure that we're opening in the right time, but we're fortunate to be able to have that opportunity to do that. Uh, but yeah, it's sort of full steam ahead there. I mean, I think on the, on the venue side, it's a bit challenging because you, our whole model is people gathering and we can't do that. Uh, right. But we're using the time to reinvest in social media plans and, and marketing plans and uh, maintenance to our building. We're, we're repainting. We're, you know, we've only been open for five months there, but we're repainting. We're looking at those different areas. And so I think that that's really um, kind of where our focus is, but it's also about, again, being ready for when the business comes back. Our model is if you have a venue that you're managing and you're working on, um, if you're standalone and it's you, it's really tough and you feel very alone at times in terms of these types of challenges. And so uh, we're preparing and kind of expanding our management portfolio, which is, hey, let's manage the property for you. Let's work together. We'll mm -hmm. retain ownership. You maintain that side of it. So we're working, having a conversation with a couple of venues right now about that type of model because this puts stress. And so how do we help alleviate the stress? Well, if we all work together, we're all kind of collaborating. It's a lot, uh, it's an easier burden to bear. So yeah, I mean, I think that's, that's it for us is, is focusing on um, the future and just understanding still that this is going to come back and how do we do everything we can to be ready for it. We're not sitting at home. Uh, we're not, you know, woe is me. There's no business. It's how do we make sure that when that business comes does come back, we're ready for it. Right. Yeah. Um, so just so we know, any students that are on the call, feel free to ask any questions in the chat and then I'll read the chat questions um, in the video for Sam to answer. Okay. So then Sam, my next question for you is, um, last week we spoke about a potential internship opportunity uh, with your company for our students at West Hills College Lemoore. What kind of internship opportunities would be available for them? 
Yeah, I think, yeah, it was a really good conversation because I think it's something I hadn't thought about until you, you brought it forward. But <laughs> I think that, you know, we're opening a brand new boutique hotel, one of which doesn't have very much in the way of standard operating procedures. We have, um, we have uh, 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 sales plans, we have, uh, you know, site plans of all these different things that we're working on. And, it, and it's a small team. And so opening a property like this, I've done it a few times. It's such a unique and exciting opportunity and experience. I think it'd be a real opportunity to look at, uh, at least remotely anyway, for the time being, uh, mm -hmm. being able to contribute in, in some way in helping us create the administrative functions behind how we do business, uh, sort of our playbook, right? Of how do we go about doing business and how do we collaborate, work together? And I think that you know, moving forward, um, when we have projects that we're doing market research, sales and marketing plans, you know, for new venues or new projects, um, there's there's that need also on sort of an, I think, an ongoing basis. So mm. I, I think there's definitely some opportunities. I've, I've, since we spoke last week, I've been making some notes here and there about kind of what that would look like, because I think, as I mentioned to you, it's really important to me that anyone um, who, who would join us in an internship role is going to see value out of this. We don't want to give them busy work. When right. we see the benefits and, and, and the value behind um, their investment in, in time in something like this. So I'm, I'm looking forward to kind of vetting that out with you a little bit and, and mm -hmm. finding for some students. Yeah, that sounds good. What type of student would you be looking for as an intern in these roles? I mean, I think someone who's obviously highly organized, but I think someone who's willing to kind of go with the flow and, and understand the dynamic nature that is hospitality, right? If any, any of your students have worked in hospitality already, I'm sure that means that they know that, you know, if they're a server, it may mean that, yeah, they've probably bust some dish tables and they've probably run the dishwasher and they might have even cooked a little bit of breakfast in the morning. I mean, it's, you know, it, 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 we wear a lot of hats in this industry. And so mm -hmm. I think that them understanding that, uh, you know, kind of be prepared for some of this as a new company, we're sort of uh, creating it on the fly. We're sort of creating policy and creating culture pieces and, and, and plans, um, you know, as we go. And it's a really fun way to do it, to be honest with you. Uh, mm -hmm. But folks who want to be a part of creating something like that. Um, candidly, if you're looking for a handbook when you come in, uh, A, B, and C, and how we do things through the steps, that's not, that's not who we are. <laughs> yeah. Frankly, that's a little boring to me. But if you're willing <laughs> look, I've got an open mind and I, and I have some ideas and I'm going to contribute as well, by all means, that's kind of what we're looking for. Right. That sounds great. Um, so then would there be opportunities for students to intern remotely then as well? Or is it more in person? No, I think so. I, I'm, 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 I think we're all still figuring out this new normal of, of Zoom and how we kind of connect and collaborate uh, in this environment. But yeah, I, I think there's definitely some opportunities for some remote type work that, that could be completed for this. Yeah. Perfect. Um, so then I recently saw some job postings on your new project, the Darling Hotel in Visalia. Are you still looking for employees? And if so, what positions are you currently looking for? Yeah, absolutely. So I, I do believe that we've got, we've gone through a pretty extensive recruitment process and I believe we've hired our, our hotel manager and our sales coordinator. Uh, but that being said, we still have event staff we need. We still need uh, culinary staff. We need chefs and bartenders and servers and dishwashers. We need guest room attendants. We need front desk agents. Um, you know, all, all those other roles need to be filled still. And so again, excuse me, still understanding the timeline of, you know, kind of the current climate is, will be an element of it. But yeah, we, we fully intend on probably in the next few weeks, um, posting more information about the roles that we have open on the Darling website. It'll be on our website as well as an extra group um, so that folks can, can apply and understand and learn more about those positions. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. We'll definitely keep an eye out for those and be promoting them out to our students too. So definitely, that sounds great. Um, so then what skill sets are you looking for in each of these positions? You mentioned just a, a bunch of them right then. So just a few of them, different skill sets would be great to know. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that um, especially in today's you know time, I mean, my, my four-year-old can work my, my phone as easily as I can. So, you know, the, the ability, I think, teach folks systems, to teach folks uh, product management systems, to teach us how to clean rooms and how to serve and, and, and the culinary side of it. We can train folks to do a lot of things. I, at the end of the day, I'm really looking for more than experience in a specific area. I'm looking for your guest service experience. I'm looking for your ability to have a conversation, um, how you're going to represent us as a company, um, your, your uniqueness. Um, I work with boutique properties and prefer, 
I, I don't work with, with, you know, branded properties right now, whether it be restaurants or, or hotels, because I like to make sure that we have the opportunity to demonstrate some personality in what we do. And so folks that are, are driven, interested in really learning um, and are, are willing to share their personality a little bit um, and to sort of um, more than anything, understand how important our guest is to us, uh, mm -hmm. what they mean to us and, and how we're to treat them, I think is really the most important thing. If you've got 10 years of experience to back that up, fantastic. Um, if you're just starting out, uh, I, this is one of the things that drives me nuts is that you know, entry level positions, they want five years of experience doing this thing. And it's like, right. it's entry level. How? how? How do you expect them to do that? And so right. I, I don't, you know, experience is important. I encourage everyone to be working in their industry now in some form or fashion, even if it's a 10 hour week, whatever, a second job, whatever that looks like, get that time and begin to sort of start that clock. But let your personality show and, and really understand that at the end of the day, that's what I'm looking for is someone who has a really interesting personality that can talk to our guests and connect with people in a really sincere and authentic way. I mean, that's yeah. right. That sounds great. I definitely agree and could see the value of that. And by the way, that applies to all, I, I didn't specify which role, right? Because I, whether you're a front desk agent, a housekeeper, event service staff, bartender you're going to be interacting with our guests you're going to be seeing them on the floors you're going to be seeing them in the property you're going to be seeing them in the kitchen or in the restaurant it's the same expectation it's the same dynamic across the board and so i really think that's a universal sort of piece there that's that's important to us and something that i look for for sure yeah that sounds good so then if we have students who are interested in being in these roles and applying for these positions what would be the best way or how would be the best way for them to apply so definitely take a look at the naxongroup.com um, we have our, all of our positions posted there that we post through all properties that, that we're working with. Um, and then if you are also interested in a specific property, so the Darling, for example, the Darling's positions are on the Darling website, the Darling by mm -hmm. So if you're looking specifically to work on something like that or Bella Vita, for example, you can go to those websites, but the naxagroup.com has all of the current recruitments for any property or portfolio that we're working with. Um, so we definitely encourage you to go there and take a look at the job descriptions. Uh, we take a lot of time to, I think it's really important to set the expectations early on of what the role is. Mm -hmm. uh, I love it when people ask questions about the role. I always, you know, it's, it's at the end of every interview, right? Do you have any questions for us? If you say, no, I'm good. That, that doesn't, I, I'm, I'm worried about that, right? It's, yeah. hey, yeah, how did you get started? Why are you doing what you're doing? What's the belief here? What's your priorities here as a company? Where do you place the emphasis? What's the, all of that is super important because I think uh, you need to know what you get yourself into and you don't want to be in the role and accept a role in a position and then say, nope, this isn't what I thought it was. So, yeah, we do. Um, Sandra on the call, she just mentioned in the chat that she's a business management and computer information system student and she's interested in applying for one of your positions. Um, so she should then go into your website, then the company's website and apply. Absolutely. And, and I would encourage you, you know, we, I, we probably set up a, like a notify us when new jobs are posted kind of thing. We don't have that yet, but I would encourage you to go back um, and take a look at that regularly because um, we are, I'm, I'm, we have three properties we're working with right now, but I've got three or four others that I'm in conversation with that there's okay. a real possibility. The way that the, that, that dynamic works is I could, I could get a call today and we could say, great, Monday we're going, we're, we're taking, here's what we're doing, here's the plan and here's what we need. So mm -hmm. things can happen quickly. So I would definitely encourage you to take a look at um, our website and to kind of check back for that from time to time. Okay. Sounds good. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate you taking the time to be on this call. That's all of my questions that I have for you. Is there anything else that you want the students to know? Or... No, I mean, I think this is a, I, I would imagine they've all figured out at this point, um, this is not a get rich quick uh, industry, um, <laughs> but it's incredibly rewarding and it is, it is so much fun. I've, I've told folks before, if you're, um, if you're looking, um, if you can't have fun in this industry and in this job, I, I don't, I can't, I don't know what to do. I can't help you. Uh, <laughs> really what you make of it. And I think that the, whether it's accounting, HR, um, management, food, it, this industry covers everything. It touches everything. And so 
Um, yeah, I think it's a lot of fun, but I encourage you to ask questions and to kind of engage with folks that you think are doing interesting things and make those connections early on because I'm telling you right now, you're going to wish when you were my age, long gone from school, I wish I would have connected with that person back then. I wish I would have begun that relationship then. Um, so yeah, definitely encourage you guys to just kind of stay uh, connected and engaged um, authentically uh, anytime that you can. So um, we do have one last question from Sandra. She wanted you to repeat the websites for applying. Yeah. So the, the primary website you'd want to check out is the Naxon group.com. That's the, the N A X O N group.com. Um, there is a careers page there. There's a contact us page there as well. Um, and then the darling would have jobs posted specifically for there. And bellavitavenue.com would have postings there as well. But again, Naxon group would have all of that. So, and now that I mentioned it, I need to go, I need to go make sure we've updated that uh, today. <laughs> launched a new website here recently, but we'll make sure that section's working. But yeah, there's a contact us there piece though. Sandra or anyone else, if, if you wanted to reach out and send some information in, you could absolutely do that, um, whether there's a posting or not, because as I mentioned, I think earlier in the call, for those of you who are, those who were listening, um, things can change dynamically. And, and although we may not have a position posted or, or something now, I, I take uh, a lot of effort to kind of build a bench and make sure that we have folks that, um, I, I've had relationships with that we can pull back and say, oh yeah, I met them three months ago. I think they'd be great for this opportunity now. So yeah, super important. Sounds good. Thank you so much. Well, I appreciate all the information you shared. Um, I'm going to um, definitely send this recording to all of our students who would be interested in these opportunities and the faculty that teach in these areas. So I just appreciate you again, taking the time to do this phone call or this Zoom call with me um, and sharing this information. Thank you so much. I appreciate you having me. Thank you. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay, I'm going to end the meeting and you have a good day. Thank you so much. Hey, thanks.